on today's episode. I have a guest who you've listened to before and a colleague, David Zarnett, and I'll pass it to him and he can introduce himself. Great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is David Zarnett. I am the Director of Research and Strategy here at Starts With Me. Uh, I'm also a political scientist by training. I teach at the University of Toronto courses on human rights and security and a whole host of other political topics. Um, and I work closely with students, many of whom struggle with mental health. So it's a, a real pleasure to be here and to contribute to Starts With Me and to hopefully empower you, the listener, to take action, to take responsibility, to enhance your own capacity for well-being. So it's a real honor uh, to be here, and I hope you get a lot out of this conversation. Thank you, David. Okay, so we are going to, I know at the end of the last podcast with Dr. Mate, where I, rec I published my interaction with him, I said I would follow up with a commentary on it, and I thought it would be more interesting and enlightening to have David participate in that. So we are going to watch the video and we're going to pause and we are going to discuss sort of some of the psychological and psychotherapeutic interaction happening between myself and Dr. Mate. And we're going to just have a conversation about it. I think it'll be super interesting for everybody. And I'm just going to roll it. Ready to go, Dave? Yeah, already. And those defenses, of course, have created more problems, but they're not wrong to have developed those defenses. It's the only thing they could have done as kids. So, so in other words, to be compassionate towards yourself and towards every aspect of yourself. The inquiry has to do with how we ask questions. And we ask questions to help people realize what's underneath their so-called dysfunctions. That in a nutshell is compassion inquiry. And I'm... So now if you want to put questions to me about it, I'm happy to take them. I'm also happy to work with people, if anybody wants that, online here. If there's any problem, you want me to work with you, if you're open enough to doing so online in front of 82 strangers from all over the world, why not, you know? But, but that depends on the individual. So uh, um, I can work with this any other way you want. We can start with your questions, perhaps, if you like. But if somebody really would like to work and we can demonstrate it, and of course, they can be a teacher to the rest of the group. Mike Stroh, you have um, raised your hand, so to speak. So go ahead. All okay. right, let's pause it there. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mike, I was, you know, to what I, I don't know the extent to which the, the listeners will know who Gabor Mate is um, and how common it is for therapists of, of his standing to do things like this. So I was wondering if you can just give, to the extent that you can, a, a bit of an overview. Who is Gabor Mate? Why is he popular? Um, what drew you to him? Maybe you can give us a bit of the backstory before we dig into the conversation you have with him. Yeah, that is a great question. So that Gabor Mate is a, I'm going to read a bit of his bio here, It'd be easier. a renowned speaker, best-selling author, and he has uh, expertise in a range of topics, including addiction, stress, childhood development. He's a physician by trade. So he, I know he did, he delivered babies. A lot of the time he was a family physician, palliative care. And then he spent a decade working uh, on in downtown Vancouver on the east side, which if anyone is aware of what goes on in downtown Vancouver on Hastings Street, mm. it, 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 it's hard to believe that that's going on in a country like Canada. I just, I remember the first time I drove through there and it was a, quite a shock. Um, there's a ton of homelessness people shooting heroin, smoking crack, like all kinds of things right out in the open. Mm. And in Vancouver, it sits on the backdrop of the most majestic mountains, you know, that you can kind of imagine. And so it's this really strange paradox. So anyway, he developed quite a, quite notoriety from his work there. And he wrote a really famous book in the realm of hungry ghosts about addiction. And so he's, He's sort of a world, I would say, a world expert on a lot of these things. And I think he's published 10 best-selling books on a whole bunch of different topics. And 
I like him a lot because he does have the a more mindfulness, mind body, philosophical kind of Eastern approach. You could say Eastern, I don't know if that's even right anymore, but approach to human suffering. And it is in direct contrast to the Western highly medical problem solution, you know, write a prescription, fix the, you know, whatever it is. So that's a bit about him. So that was the first part, I guess, about him. Uh, and then you asked me what drew me to him or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, but I guess which I sort of answered. And then the, the rebel wisdom community that brought him in, uh, they make documentary films and they do a lot of this type of stuff in big groups and in the COVID world and in my own spiritual development, you could say, I am also seeking out other groups where I can practice and learn. Mm -hmm. And so that's what drew me to the rebel wisdom community. I think they're pretty awesome. They bring in a lot of great teachers like Gabor um, to do these things. And so then as we were sitting there and he poses the question, you know, I can work with somebody I wasn't expecting that. And then, of course, it was pure crickets because I would say, and he, he mentioned it, if anyone's open enough and, and sort of willing enough to work honestly and openly in front of a bunch of strangers, I invite you to do that. Mm. And I would say, because I have so much experience being open in front of strangers and talking about these things, uh, I was, I had no inhibition or I wasn't sort of, yeah. And so then I, I love working with great teachers. It's just such an incredible opportunity. Here's one of the world's leading teachers on this kind of stuff. Uh, and so I was just thought to myself, wow, I better jump in there. So Mike, it's funny because the second question I was going to, I was going to ask when I was, I guess, watching in preparation for this was why did you raise your hand? How did you feel? Were you nervous? Is this something that you felt totally comfortable with? Do you remember your emotions? Were, was there any sense of like dread, um, potential embarrassment at what you might say, or were you just you know, you've told your story a lot. You're, you're now a, a practicing therapist. You've spoken in front, in front of thousands of people. Did it feel just really natural and something um, obvious that you should do? It did. It did, particularly when nobody was speaking up. <laughs> I just thought, okay, I, I often wrestle with this. I'm, I'm going to pause and let the next few minutes roll because I think that will help introduce. Right. So, yeah, I think because no one else was, was jumping in there, that was the invitation. I think that, that I needed in some sense to put my hand up. Yeah. So I, I'll roll it. Let me share this again and we'll keep watching. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so Mike, hi. Thanks for doing Can I say a few yeah. things? Ground rules, okay? So first of all, uh, thank you for doing this. Secondly, you'll find me interrupting you, okay, at times. If I do yeah. so, it's because I think it's helpful to do that. It's not because I'm impatient or I'm bored or, I'm or, or I think you're wrong, okay? None of that. It's just I'm going to move the process along for your benefit, okay? Sure. sure. Thirdly, any question I ask you is an invitation, not a demand. So if I ask you something and you don't feel like answering it, even if, if mid into your answer, midway into your answer, you realize I'm not comfortable talking about this, you just stop. You just say so. Okay? But until you do say so, I'm going to assume that it's okay with you. Is that fair enough? And the final, thing, the final thing I'll say is, I don't know what problem you're going to present me with, but I really have no idea whether I can help you at all. It's an experiment, right? As long as you're willing to be part of an experiment, I am, but maybe I'll. 
maybe I'll come out of it looking totally incompetent. I don't know. Let's give it a chance. <laughs> okay. So, what would you like to talk about? Sure. Um, I guess just to preface what you were saying, I've this is a bit of an indulgement for me because I have done a lot of these type of things, but it's I always love doing them again uh, or more. And specifically, I read Stop recently right listened to. Oh, sorry. Stop right there. Please, yeah. One of the things I do in compassion inquiries is I pay attention to people's language, okay? Now, if I was working with Melissa or David or Alexander or anybody else, would you say to them, oh, are you indulging yourself? No. But notice you said it to yourself. Yes. Which means that there's an element of lack of compassion for the self. Notice that? Yes. Even as you're asking your help for help, you're kind of excusing yourself. Okay. I'm kind of what? Sorry. Excusing yourself or or, or yes, or, yes, 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 yes. Okay. Well, let's just notice that. Nothing wrong with that. I'm, this is not to make you wrong. It's just an automatic tendency that you might notice in yourself. Okay. All right. Definitely. Fair enough. Thank you. Please carry on. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm never, no matter how much help I get, I'm still not worthy of getting it. I hope you enjoyed that clip. So in the next clips, we're going to continue talking about this interaction with Dr. Mate. What are your thoughts about noticing things about yourself in which you're not open to honoring or in which you think you're not deserving of a particular support or of people helping you? This is often a big challenge for a lot of people. And I would say most of the time, I'm pretty good at asking for help and recognizing where I need help. I think I was a little bit in this situation, um, a little bit off my game since I was in front of so many strangers and also because I was with Dr. Mate for the first time in this context. Okay, so please comment ask questions, engage in this experience as much as you can. And Dr. Zarnett, David, and I will be back uh, continuing our analysis of my interaction with Dr. Gaber Mate. Okay, if you want to watch the full interaction between myself and Gaber Mate, strictly that clip, you can watch it here or in one of these videos. If you want to listen to a full podcast of David Zarnett, Dr. Zarnett and I going through this. I will put a link to that podcast episode in the show notes and eventually we will release the full video. Okay, thank you very much. Please comment, like, and subscribe.